Okay, so what we'll start with today is primarily some vocabulary to get everybody on the same page in terms of jargon, um, discuss the connection between geographic information systems, spatial analysis, what is special about spatial data, and then give you very quickly a um, taxonomy, if you wish, of the types of spatial statistical analyses that depend on the types of spatial data that you use. And that's very important to know that distinction between the three. So we'll start with uh, some very general notions about GIS and spatial analysis. Then we'll focus on the specific nature of spatial data and close with some spatial data analysis concepts. Um, okay. Who knows this uh, picture? I know several of you do. This is a classic picture. Every spatial analysis or GIS book now has this picture in it. This is the map of the residences, the addresses, of the people who contracted cholera in the famous cholera epidemic in London. And Dr. Snow mapped out these addresses and then legend has it, using spatial analysis, determined that this pump, the Broad Street pump, was the cause of the infection. Uh, there are several um, web pages and books that deal with this issue. If you Google it, you can find really interesting sites. There's one at UCLA, which has a whole history uh, and also uh, details about the other work that Snow did, not just related to cholera. But this is kind of the poster child for spatial analysis. What is the question here? We have data. The data are recorded spatially, geographically. We have addresses. They become points on a map. Then we use this information as a pattern to deduce something about a causal mechanism that may generate the pattern. And that's what a lot of these spatial data analyses are going to be about. Now what's going to differ between them is the kind of spatial data, whether they're points, whether they're like here, addresses, or census tracts, or counties, or surfaces, that will differ between them. And then also the types of questions that we ask will differ between them, as we'll see. Here's kind of a modern day version of this snow type map. This is something you can actually check out on the website of the local newspaper. It's a map using Google Map um, and a mashup that shows the locations approximately of the uh, police reports. So the police reports in the past month give you the locations of um, burglaries in homes and businesses and car vehicle uh, break-ins. And so then it's the same thing. We have locations. They are put on a map. In this case, we have an actual street map as well. And then we can ask the question, is there any kind of patterning here? Is this totally random? Or if there is patterning, what can we relate to patterning to? And one of the things that we will do in the course is approach this formally. Rather than saying, I'm looking at this picture and I see a lot of these in this area and I know that's where the sororities are, that's where a lot of students live and then I make that connection that way. What we'll try to do is find a, a formal basis for statements, statements like that and by formal I mean using probability theory so that we can quantify the uncertainty or the certainty with which we make those statements. So we'll be able to say that five out of a hundred cases I might be wrong in drawing this conclusion. This will be our p-value of a statistical test, for example. And that's the difference between just looking at the picture and making a statement and the types of analyses that we'll be using. Taking the same information, taking the locations of the events, quantifying, formalizing them, and coming to our conclusions. This is all, of course, related to the existence of GIS. Before GIS, it was very hard to do this. Dr. Snow did it by hand on a hand-drawn map. Uh, and Google is just a couple of clicks away, and you have this information. 
Um, GIS has evolved over time and originally it was looked at primarily as a toolbox. This is the view of GIS as a geographic information system, as an information system with geographic data and an information system that contained, as you see here in the quote by Burrow from his uh, 1986 text, a set of tools for collecting, storing, retrieving at will, transforming and displaying spatial data from the real world for a particular set of purposes. And this last element is very important because it makes a connection between simple data collection and storage and using it for something, using it in policy, using it in business, using it in environmental management, for example. That was very much um, the way one thought about this in, say, the mid-80s. And as um, GIS is involved, they um, incorporated more and more functionality. And uh, in the early 90s, we could look at this and basically distinguish uh, four broad categories of functionality that any GIS had more or less to different degrees. Uh, the input is the collecting of information, which you saw in the definition before. Storage, you also saw in the definition before. Now, these uh, may sound trivial, but when you, sound, when you deal with uh, geographic information, it's not that trivial. And, and we'll see uh, in a few minutes an, an example of what it involves. Storage, um, geographic data take a lot of space. And to store them efficiently so that you can very quickly, for example, in a Google search, you may now be used to asking a question, well, which are the stores close to me? And this, think about this. What does, how does Google know that these stores are close to the point where you click on the map? That requires efficient data structures so that these queries can be made in real time as it's done in any modern GIS as well as Google Maps and similar uh, systems. The third one I highlight because that's what we will be doing is the analysis function and over time there have been different interpretations of what analysis is in a GIS and if you've taken GIS courses you probably have had analysis which was primarily buffering, computing distances, areas and others manipulations of the data like that. What we mean by analysis here in, in this paper was statistical analysis and optimization using operations research with the GIS, uh, process modeling with the GIS, which pushes the limits of the GIS. And in fact, it becomes very difficult to decide where the GIS stops and say a simulation system begins or a statistical system begins. And there was a lot of discussion in the early 90s about um, should the GIS incorporate a statistical system or should a statistical system incorporate a GIS or should there be efficient ways for the two systems to communicate and move data between them uh, efficiently. That's pretty much a moot point this day and age with interoperability which allows different data sources and data sets to be used by different systems by means of metadata. So the metadata tell the system how the data are organized and how it should use them and in an ideal world um, the system should be completely um, blind to the source of the data. Now this is in an ideal world. We're not quite there yet but we're much much closer than we were say in, in the 90s. And then finally, output, that's presentation. An important aspect of that, which we'll talk a little bit about next week, is geovisualization, is the presentation of geographic information.